On the 28th of October, 2020, a tropical storm was heading westward towards the northern regions of the Philippines. In the following days, it would grow to become a Category 5 super typhoon, known to us as Rolly, and by the world as Goni. Goni is one of the strongest recorded typhoons to ever hit the Philippines, many of which have occurred in the past 20 years. Scientific evidence suggests that this increasing severity of tropical storms is linked with our warming globe. This brings up the question of how else our changing climate will affect the Philippines, and what can we do to help stop it? The increasing probability of extreme weather is one of the most dangerous potential effects of climate change and it is especially relevant in the Philippines. According to a study conducted by German Watch, which quantified the impacts of extreme weather events in terms of fatalities and economic losses, in 2018 the Philippines was the second most vulnerable country to extreme weather events and in the period between 1999 to 2018 it ranked fourth overall. Another piece of evidence which supports this claim is a study published in 2016. In this study, the researchers found that typhoons which made landfall have intensified substantially since the 1970s, caused by an increase in sea surface temperature in a band off the coast of Southeast Asia. In fact, a simulation from a study in 2018 predicted that globally in the period between 2016 and 2035, 32 typhoons will be well above a Category 5 on the Saphir simpson scale. With the Earth's average temperature rising at a faster rate than before, we can only expect the ferocity of the storms to worsen. This is a photograph I captured of the Banaua rice terraces in 2018, and in this photo lies two important parts of our livelihood which are in danger due to the climate crisis. The first of which is food. Take the Filipino staple of rice. Like other agricultural produce, rice is partially dependent upon the temperature at the environment in which it grows. Wasman et al. concluded that in terms of risk of an increase in heat stress, there are parts of Asia which include the Philippines where current temperatures are already approaching critical levels during the susceptible stages of the rice plant. This means that temperatures are already rising to a point where, when under prolonged exposure, plant growth and development is inhibited, causing irreversible damage to the crop, increasing the likelihood of widespread famine. Additionally, a study conducted by the International Rice Research Institute shows that grain yield can decrease by at least 10% for each one degree increase in growing season minimum temperature in the dry season. This means that even if the increased temperature doesn't reach a critical point to kill the crops, there will still be a significant reduction in supply. And it's not only rice that we have to be concerned about. In the fifth assessment report carried out by the IPCC, it suggests that the maximum catch potential of Philippine seas will decrease by as much as 50% compared to 2001-2010 levels. These scientific studies show the real possibility of potential famines and portrays the immense threat which climate change poses to Philippines food security. So let's go back and re-examine the photo again. The second part to this picture which I want to point out relates to the significance of this place and the economic impact it has. The Fugao rice terraces are beautiful. It was an amazing experience being able to witness it in person, and I'm not the only one to think that. 
The Fugao rice terraces have garnered international recognition and are considered to be a UNESCO World Heritage, one of six UNESCO sites based in the Philippines. This, alongside the beautiful beaches and world-class hospitality, has allured the hearts of many to come visit. In 2019, 12.7% of the Philippines' GDP, 2.48 trillion Philippine peso, or 51.6 billion US dollars, was made by tourism alone. Greater instability caused by extreme weather and food shortages will act as a deterrent for tourists and will prevent them from having the opportunity to visit these incredible places. Based on a study by the Asian Development Bank on the economics of climate change, the Philippines stands to lose 6% of its GDP annually by 2100 if it disregards climate change risks. The same study found that if the Philippines invests 0.5% of its GDP by 2020 in climate change adaption, it can avert losses of up to 4% of its GDP by 2100. So now you may be wondering what can we do to help prevent or at least mitigate the severe effects of climate change. But unfortunately, it's not that simple. Climate change is a global problem that requires unprecedented international collaboration and cooperation. We have to eliminate our dependence on non-renewable energy sources, which is a task filled with a plethora of scientific and political hurdles. But despite this, we can still make a difference. We can choose to raise awareness of the needs to stop climate change. We can voice our support for legislation that incentivizes sustainable development in the country. And we can support leaders who believe in the same vision. And to those who are watching who are still in their youth, you can make the biggest impact. By pursuing a higher education, maybe you can find the solution to our problems. Maybe you will be the one to research and invent the best way to harness renewable energy. Maybe you'll help pass the laws to promote sustainable development. Or maybe you'll be the one to educate others about these issues. And with this new generation of united, determined, and caring citizens, there will be no problem we can't solve.